What's up everybody? Welcome to a new episode of Hacketech Playground. Today we'll talk about a very important topic and that's static testing of infrastructure as a code. Some people call it SAST, which, is, which means basically uh, software application static testing or static application security testing, whenever you like. And we really need to consider infrastructure as a code, as a, as a piece of software, because this is a software defined infrastructure, uh, software defined network. And we need to learn how to, and we have also software defined applications in software defined infrastructure. And we need to learn how to scan them before we will deploy them. And we need to learn how to discover vulnerabilities even before anything will be deployed in the cloud or any other like virtualization technology in on-prem. Because of that, we have several tools that allow you, that allowing you to test your infrastructure before deployment and uncover the vulnerabilities that can basically destroy your environment or affect your environment in a very negative way and open the door to negative adversaries or to hackers. I want to show you today also Snick platform, which is a developer-centric or DevSecOps-centric uh, platform for all the guys who are interested in cybersecurity. And there is infrastructure as a code scanning here in setup here in the settings. If you will go in your Snick and I'm using the free account, so I don't have any special dedicated account like from my company. So I can I can go to infrastructure as code. And here you can enable or disable the detect configuration files. You can also save these changes and you can you know create your own custom policy setup with a severity definition. So you can change the severity in your findings or in any findings and you will also get information that this is not the default setup and you can save it and you can also filter for example only the findings for cloud formation that's that's something that uh, i found very beneficial if your company does not work with terraform you can filter just cloud formation and create your own policy to get all the info uh, just to not you know talk only about aws because it's not only provider you have also the azure gcp and also kubernetes uh, findings when you will look at the amount of findings this is not very heavy but still it's enough to get the basic insight or get the basic security posture before you will deploy anything and uh, i really encourage you to try this one welcome to vulnerable infrastructure as a code lab here we have not only Terraform, but there is also AWS, Azure deployments, CloudFormation, Kubernetes deployments. All of that vulnerable by default, bundled together. I really thank BridgeCrew for creating that. I just you know, smur like surfed through several repositories on GitHub and you know put it together. And now we can play with that. We can actually explore what is possible to do with static security testing on infrastructure as a code so let's play with something called snake and i will say okay snake infrastructure as a code test and then help uh, which is which will tell me what is possible to do with infrastructure as a code testing you can connect yourself to the api of itself of snake itself you can use a proxy services to to reach whenever service you like because sometimes you have proxy and you are for example executing a snake or any other like cli tool in your ci cd and you go out through the proxy so that's something that you want to configure and what you what you can do and it's really amazing with with this snake is a cloud formation kubernetes terraform and terraform plan together can be tested in one platform. This is really good. There are some disadvantages and I will show you which are there, but you know, all of that bundled together, this DevSecOps centric platform is pretty good. It's pretty cool. And you can specify lots of, I will say, nice parameters for verbosity. You know, if you want to be more talkative and more explorative in, in your way of testing, you can do it like that. You can also, you know, say what will be the output. If, if you want a serif or if you have JSON file, uh, out of your scans, you can do it. And what is very important here is the security threshold. I'll copy this one because we will use it. And okay, I will say snake infrastructure as code test for me my AWS and it will run the AWS scan on our AWS directory and there, will, there are 17 different issues. It will give you a summary of, of the findings 
and it will tell you in which files which findings are what is the project name also the organization and some short description what i really don't like the description it's not really heavy it will not like direct you to the documentation it will not tell you what is the line of the problem but it will tell you the root path or the path in your document through the elements of the document to, to your problematic configuration. So it will tell you that here in the resource, in the Lambda function, tracing config, in exact this path or exact path to this element is a problem. I would like to more know what line is that, you know, just to not explore that and look in the document or, or in the infrastructure as a code itself and explore where is it. So that's the problematic part of, of Snake. Uh, there is also a very small database of the findings, but it's 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 work in progress. So I am not mad at them because the platform is pretty fantastic. And another part, you know, I'm really not happy with the output. I want to put it in the JSON and I want to consume that in, in other services like some, I don't know, NovaSQL databases or in DynamoDB, or I want to put it like in Security Hub in AWS. And okay, in that kind uh, or in this in this case. Uh, I want to say, okay, snake infra infrastructure as a code, test, okay, test, uh, for example, I will test AWS again, and okay, that's that's it, and JSON, I'll say, okay, let's hit the JSON, and what we will get, it will be data in JSON, really nice, really smooth, easy to consume, easy to parse, and another case, I, I, what, I really, what I really want to do, okay, I'll just copy, paste this security threshold, because I really am lazy in writing, so, uh, we can use this as a filter for the data that will be outputted to you or which will be printed out in the standard output for you. So I'm interested in medium and above. So hit it. And what it will do, it will tell me, uh, you see here we have just six issues here and uh, it will print for me just the medium findings. Uh, no lows and you see here, but what we get is just the medium severity findings very easy very easy to use very simple it can be also used for kubernetes so if i will say okay infrastructure as a code test and i will say here is my kubevil so it will go through the kubernetes it will scan it it will tell me what what is the problematic part uh, it will find the, the specific files which contains the which which contain the configuration itself and it will basically run the scan on that and just give me the output you see here, the Quebec config, it will tell me what's wrong. Uh, it also uh, will tell you, for example, if your container is running uh, without or with root permissions, uh, if you enable drop all default capabilities or all of these things that are pretty good, it will tell you also which YAMLs are affected. And so uh, for like a quick check, it, it is really good. You know, I, I cannot cannot complain about that. And it's it's very good to have it as a step in your CI CD, whatever CI CD platform are you using. When we talk about DFTFSEC, it's currently part of the AquaSec. FTFSEC.dev. If you will go to docs, docs are pretty good. Uh, also, they have their own GitHub repository with, with the basic information, how you can use it. You see here the new info about that they joined Aqua Security. That's that's a really good move. I think that all the great tools are being ingested by, by really big companies like Bridge Crew or AquaSec. Uh, Bridge Crew like connected to, to Prisma. Uh, so or like Palo Alto. So these things are really, really good and you know, it helps the community to grow and it helps to improve and invest in the tools that they matter. So this is this really good move that they move to AquaSec. And then you also see lots of interesting details about the expiration dates, you know, some ignore changes, how you disable checks. But the, the, the jewel here is mainly the, the documentation itself. Because for example, I will go to ECS and for example, enable transit encryption. It is giving you insecure example and secure example of what you can do and what, uh, what basically related to your finding. So when we will look at that, you will know what is the problem, how to secure it. This is what I really like, the recommendation with, with the snippet and also related links to Terraform, Amazon. And that's how it should be. You get the link to the provider of the infrastructure as a code. You will get the link to the cloud provider and you will get the solution. What I really miss here are like better descriptions, very long, like a long description impact, you know, and what's the risk and all of these things around. But this is something that uh, how it should look like. And uh, if you are looking for some like 
how I get advice, how to solve a specific problem. This is a good place where to look. Really good tool is a DFSEC. DFSEC is super fast. DFSEC, I will show you something. It's super fast. It's it's faster than light. No, I'm just joking, but it's it's really fast. So DFSEC is, is a very good tool for really easy and, and fast scanning. When we'll check, check what is possible to do with it, uh, you can skip some checks. You can allow, allow all checks. You can specify a custom check dear. So there are lots of things that you can you can force all directories. You can format the string. You can also show the GIF, like celebratory GIF, on the terminal that there are no problems found. And you can also ignore some some kinds of uh, findings or problematic parts for you. So uh, and I will check the version for you just to, just to show you what's the version TFSEC uh, version. This is my version, and you see I'm using 0 0.58.6, just, just for, for cross-reference. And when I want to uh, do some really fast scan with the DFSEC, uh, I can say, okay, DFSEC, uh, and I want to check, for example, this AWS, and I'll, I will just scan this AWS. It will tell me what is the problem, uh, again, in my AWS deployments. Uh, it also supports another one, uh, other, another. So if I will show you, for example, for GCP, it will scan the GCP, there are 36 potential problems, and it will show, okay, in this storage bucket is, uh, does not have uniform bucket level access enabled. So it, it works for, for all the providers, uh, but the TFSEC is mainly for Terraform, so it does not work with the cloud formation. I will say, okay, TFSEC, AWS. Now, what I really like on this, uh, for example, is, I will try to find for you some really good finding, uh, some security groups, should not have description enabled. That's 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 the, that's the pity one. It's like very empty, uh, very uh, easy to detect, and it's not actual findings. So I will try to find. Uh, here is a critical monitoring elastic. Oh, not, not 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 so not so good for showcasing you. Uh, for example, EBS volume host storage uh, does not use the CMK customer managed keys. And what is really good in this platform, it will tell you. Okay, there is there's a problem in your EC2 TF, it's a line 34 to line 51. Oh, that's good. You know, and that's that's good to know because it will tell you the scope of the lines that are affected by a problem. So it will also print out the piece of the code that's that's a problematic here, and that's really good. It will tell you the impact, very important for security. There, there should be at least some risk assessment or some impact or some severity of that. So severity and impact, that's really good. It will tell you here. What is the impact and what is the resolution? The resolution is a little bit, you know, on the <laughs> in the corner because it doesn't tell too much, but there is more information. That's good because they tell you where you should explore, where you can explore the resolution of your problem. That's what something what I really like. So it, it gives you more detailed information. It gives you line where is a problem and it also guide you and like directs you to the documentation itself or to the documentation of Terraform itself and also to the TFSEC database with, with the findings. And it's 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 pretty pretty easy to use, pretty fast. I think that this tool is is one of the best that you can use for your CI CD because of the speed of itself. So uh, that's 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 I would say the main highlight of TFSEC. There is also another tool which is prepared by AquaSec, and I think that this is CFSEC, like Cloud Formation Security. And they will focus not on Terraform, but on CloudFormation. So if you are running your AWS native deployments in CloudFormation, that's that's something for you. So let's talk about TerraScan by Acurix. Uh, TerraScan is static code analyzer. Again, I'm, I'm stressing that this is static code analyzer for infrastructure as a code. So TerraScan allows you to scan your infrastructure as a code, monitor the, the infrastructure as a code, and it, it, it also offers the flexibility to run locally and integrate it with your CI CD. But if you look at the resources, there is also interesting uh, like uh, links to, to Discord and uh, run terrascan.io. Uh, what are the key features? That's also really, really cool to read because it's a Kubernetes uh, native scanner. It's, it also helps you to analyze your Helm and customize templates. That's something really cool. And I consider that as a really good step forward if you are using one of these templating systems. Also, it allows you to, do, to scan the Docker images. And the, the support here is pretty neat. 
It's it's really good because they they support AWS, Azure, and GCP. You know, I think that this is a must nowadays. You need to support all the three major cloud providers to get most of that because ma ma majority of the companies are moving to some multi cloud or hybrid solutions. So you you really need to cover as much as possible here. And one thing that I want to also mention is that it it can it can run as a server. I think that here you can install, scan, integrate. So all of these things uh, that you can you can run as a server are also very very good, uh, very good thing to, to 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 know about that. And you, you you see here that you can exclude some policies. So recommend you to do some reading and have some fun. So we are here with the next tool and it's TerraScan. TerraScan minus minus help. And TerraScan is TerraScan is somehow very special because. It helps you to initialize remote rules that you don't need to write by yourself because we're not talking about the policy as code, but we're talking about static analysis on infrastructure as a code. So first thing what you should do is initialize your TerraScan and, uh, and clone the policies from the TerraScan GitHub repository. It will give you the out of the box rules for scanning. Then you can run the scan. And also very important part, if you want to run it from CI CD, you can have like out of the box server running somewhere with the API providing your services of scanning. And that's something really, really cool because you can have it in ECR or in Kubernetes as a pod and it will serve you out of your CI CD. So you don't need, you don't need to install it there, but you just call there. So you will use call URL to this specific server. Uh, to the API and it will st start some, to do some scanning. So what we can do, and first uh, I will show you Terra scan, Terra scan, uh, scan and then the version just for cross reference. Then hit enter. Okay, Terra scan version. It's okay. I forget this part. Task and version, and here we are. It's a version 1.10.0. So that's my version that I'm using. So check what's your version. Maybe there will be a newer one, but I, I like this one and I'm really happy with it. So Terra scan and in it. And what it will do, it will now download all the policies and, and the rules for checks for me here to test. So it will take some time. It, 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 it needs to download all the rules and then, then it's, it doesn't last really long, so you, you should be really well set up. And then when you want to scan something, you need to say scan and AWS. And you see here, I, I get the problem. So one thing with TerraScan is that your local working directory should be the root of your scanning stuff. So I need to go to AWS. And when, whenever I am in AWS, I will clear, clear the screen. So I'm now in the root directory of my Terraform deployment for AWS. And what I want to do is uh, scanning or scan this environment or this infrastructure as a code. So I will say Terra scan, uh, scan, and that's it. Uh, it will scan this directory and the, the output is pretty good. It will again tell you this elb.tf in the root module uh, on the line two, there is a low severity, so there is AWS ELB incoming traffic is not encrypted. Okay, and that is, for example, here EC2 instances should disable IDMS, that's instance metadata service, uh, or require instance metadata service uh, version two. And what it is, it's in dbapp.tf in the root module on the line 243. And it's, it's a medium finding. So if you have multi-module deployment, it will tell you how deep in the modules on the Terraform modules you are. And that's pretty good to, to know too, because sometimes you consume uh, another modules or some remote modules uh, from your repositories. And it's really good to check against the supply chain attacks. So. And this tool provides another little bit different viewpoint and, and it's it's pretty pretty simple to use too. Uh, what is very cool, and I want to show you this one too, is, is the server. So, you know, to start a server is very easy. It's TerraScan server, then hit enter. And when you are there, it will start really, really fast, the server with the API. And first thing that it will output to you is 
at least the, the short list of the APIs that you can use. Here is the infrastructure as a code type, infrastructure as a code version, and, and then the, the, the cloud provider remote deer scan, so you can scan the remote directory. It also supports the Kubernetes deployment. So this is a very good uh, server to run and it's you see it's very fast and it runs on like natively it runs on port 9010 so 9010 and that's it for for this scan really good tool is checkoff really really known on the market and it's it's one of the one of the like most quality ones that you can use for the purposes of scanning of your infrastructure as a code it's in the borderline between policy as a code and static scanning of the code, but it, it has like a very lot of different features, you know. It can detect the credentials, it, it, it has like lots of policies inside. It, it helps you to generate Cyclone DX, it helps you to suppress some findings. You can write your own rules too. And that's, that's also a very good to, thing to know. So if you go to docs, I think that in the docs, there is there is lots of interesting things that you can go through. There is a policy as a code, the code analysis, they already added also the drift detection. You need to think about that, that this is a, this is a basically the, uh, the paid tool, but there are some things with the open source part that you can use. There is also the, the IDA integration for, for your code. So when you will go, for example, the policy as a code, you can create your own policies. They have also the the Python as a policy here uh, with uh, with Chekhov. When you look at the documentation of Chekhov itself, uh, you can go to one thing that I want to really mention as important. It's a custom policies. It's a Python Python custom policies. So there is a Python package that you can include in your own code and and use it for defining your own rules. And that's something really cool. So if you are a fan of Python like I am. <laughs> then there is something better that you can use. And you can basically, you can build your own policy as a code or static analysis as a code here, which will help you to significantly improve your security. And, and that's something, you know, that's something, uh, even if you are not guru in security, you can use it out of the box. But if you want to have fun, that's something for you. So we'll talk about Chekhov. If you know that tool, uh, it has the name is the same as, as a captain in uh, Star Trek. So if you are fans of Star Trek, Chekhov is, is the one of the characters that you should know and you actually really know, I'm sure. And there, is, there are several other tools that we can you know discuss today. It can be Open Policy Agent, it can be Cloud Rail, all of these amazing platforms. But their main purpose is not the static application or static infrastructure as a code testing. It offers more than this. And because of that, I'm not focusing on these tools. So I'm trying to like keep the low profile to make this video interesting also for people who are not the cybersecurity experts. So check off show config is, is the first config. Is the first thing that you should do. It will give you the output of your current configuration for Chekhov. It will tell you what you have set it up. Uh, you see here that uh, we have all frameworks, branches, master, so you can select specific branch for scanning if you are using Git. And you can load external modules, you can you know, evaluate variables, and you can create your own baseline or, or Chekhov, I will say Chekhov, and help. And you will see what everything we can do with this very simple tool, which is also having integration with, with the IDE, with, the, for example, Visual Studio Code. When you will see here, uh, here, help, and you will check it with me. There is There are plenty of options that you can do. You can skip some checks. You can include only checks. You can uh, output that in the Cyclone DX, which is a format really important nowadays for the supply chain attacks and the prevention, so you need to know what you are producing. So it is really good to get at least the basic overview of the library that you are using and put them in the something called software bill of materials. Uh, and Cyclone DX is one of the format that allows you to do that. Then you can put it in the Sarif or JSON. And also when you will look at, you can use the uh, bridge queue API key, which is, uh, which is basically the API key, which you can get from their platform as a service, which is like, 
free to some extent and then you need to pay for some basic plans basically it's paid platform and then you can see you can you can use lots of external modules for for usage in your own way uh, you can skip some paths you can external you can check some external directories you can list all the checks you can you can run in quiet mode and then you can spell it, so specify the framework cloud formation terraform kubernetes it's serverless arm terraform plan helm docker file secrets lots of cool things you know that you can test i'm really happy with this one so when you will go to to check off list we will we'll, we'll get the complete list of the findings that you can get here there are like more than 1238 findings that you can get from various infrastructure as code management platforms so if you want to scan with check off uh, specific directory is minus D or directory and I can say okay check for me AWS then it, it lasts for a while so it will do some scans it will skip some stuff uh, or it will if you, if you, if you like into instrument it to do that and then it will provide you the results this is not the fastest one but it provides very good results because it will tell you exact line where is the problem like 44 here here is the problem because we are putting AWS access key directly in the infrastructure as code, which is a really bad, bad, nasty practice. And it will tell you lots of other things. You see here that it will tell you that line 38 to 41 is, is wrong and, on, and what is problematic here with the descriptions and why it fails. And also it will tell you which, which, uh, fine, which checks passed, which is also good because it is not telling you you failed big time but it is telling you where you were good and where you need to have some improvements. So I will clear it here. If you want to, you know, for example, whitelist some uh, some parts of the scans, for example, I will scan everything here because we have Azure and GCP deployments here and I want to just scan everything for AWS. I can use a star for, for wildcard. OK, there are no matches for that. But I can say, for example, OK, AWS, something uh, like 51, skip check. But uh, it usually supports wildcards, so you can do you can do it. I don't know why it didn't work in this time. And then it will skip. It will scan everything, but not this one. And or if, if it exists, that's very important. You need to know that this check actually exists. And then you can select like specific check just to be scanned there only for you. So. You are, for example, working on one case and you want to test just this one case. So I will copy this one. Just wait a minute for completing the scan. And then if oh, it looks that I will for fast forward this, I will for fast forward this, uh, this finding and I will come back to you when it will be completed. Now the finding is completed. So it took some time because uh, the extensive scanning and then then we are done so, but if you want to scan specific just one case that you are working on now like i can i can use for example check of directory check and check there's no skip check but check and uh, check this concrete finding then i will say okay this this one is the the particular one that i'm interested in please do not scan anything else please focus on just this finding so it will go to the directory itself. It will check all the directories that we have there because there is also cloud formation. So it will scan also the cloud formation templates and also the Terraform ones because I didn't say which framework it should scan. And then uh, basically it will go through the file and it will search this specific pattern for you and, and give you the results. I will again fast forward this scan. And here we have the results. You see here, for example, X-ray tracing is not enabled for Lambda, it's missing, and it is telling you where is the problem. Really cool, and it's pretty good. So it scan exact, this exact one finding for me. And what if I will show you the, the configuration file, I will get the config, config file that I have here. This is my like custom-made configuration file that you can create in your own baseline. And you can like reference it in, in every scan. So you can use it in, in the CI CD and reference this exact file should do this type of the scanning. And this time, please uh, reference another config and it will do different types of scanning. So I'm saying 
which which checks should be skipped, what is the output type, and what are the frameworks. So this is like my own configuration that I can use. Uh, another really good thing is that if you want to, for example, scan just Kubernetes, uh, you can say, okay, check off minus D, and our, I'm interested in, okay, just hit enter accidentally, minus D, and uh, I will say framework, framework is Kubernetes. And I'm interested in Kubernetes, uh, for example, in the directory. I will make it a little bit faster. So kubevuln, and I will say, okay, scan everything in uh, in the directory kubevuln, and focus on the framework Kubernetes. So if there will be anything else, like graph formation or Terraform, forget about that. Please focus on Kubernetes. And what it will do, it will go to this directory, it will find all the Kubernetes configuration, and then search only specific Kubernetes uh, vulnerabilities in the, in the code itself. And for example, here, you see image should be used digest, and it will tell you where it is. So it is in your dashboard configuration, line 135 to 158, and you know where exactly is the problem. And, and same is for, for another findings. And that's it for Chekhov. I think that, you know, we can spend on that really long time, but I love this platform. It's like booming. It's really good. It's, and it's easy to use. It's a CLL based. There have also the SaaS platform. That is an IDE plugin, which will give you advices, what you are doing wrong. And, you know, that's, that's more than amazing. I encourage all of you to, to just try it, download TerraGoat or CloudFormation Goat. They are all available on GitHub and please try it and feel free to, to let me know in the comments which tool is your favorite. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. I hope that you have some takeaways from that. Do actually you know what is TFSEC, what is Chekhov, how to run these tools, that you can run these tools also in your IDE, which we haven't done because of some demos are pretty exhaustive for, for the licenses and also uh, you will know how to run them in your CI CD. You will know how to scan your infrastructure as a code. So you will, even with, without being experts in security, you will get the basic knowledge. And I hope that I was able today to transfer at least the part of the knowledge to you and inspire you in testing your own infrastructure as a code and understanding, understanding the basic concepts of it. So go there to your environment or build your own lab with TerraGold or any other platforms out there or CFN Goat and test it. Play with that. Play with the different setups and let me know in your comments. Cheers.